Okay, so um, even before yesterday's um, yesterday's I'm going to say attack on the White House uh, took place, um, I found uh, through a uh, rabbi, her name is Verit Hollander Gold Farber, and I actually studied with her at the Fuchsburg Yeshiva in Jerusalem some years back. Um, I found a wonderful um, idea because tomorrow morning we reach Shemot, which is the first Parsha in the second book of the Torah called Shemot. And every book, all five books of the Torah, the first Parsha, the first portion, holds the book's name. So, for example, when we read the book, I started the book Bereshit, the first portion's name was Bereshit. Uh, Shemot means names. Now, it's about the exodus from Egypt, so why would it be called names? It's because it starts out with the names of the 70 uh, Jews that were living in Egypt during the time of famine. And that is where um, they could find food at the time. Uh, the uh, What I would like to share with you um, is part of uh, what this rabbi had to say. And I think it was perfect because there's so much basar so much that we could talk about in this first portion of Shemot. And um, I called it, where do we look for an, an ethical leader? And believe it or not, this I, I got this even before yesterday ever happened. So it was Beshert, and I think it's perfect. And I'm going to share some of this with you, and of course, some of my own ideas I will integrate as well. Uh, Moshe's account encounter with God at the burning bush resembles and perhaps anticipates the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. In both experiences of revelation, Moshe is on a lone journey when he encounters the divine amidst fiery conflagration atop a mountain. The Hebrew used in the Torah for the burning bush is Sineh. A near anagram of Sinai or Sinai. And indeed this week's Parsha, Shemot, explicitly identifies the site of Moshe's first revelation as Horev, the mountain of the Lord, which is another name for Mount Sinai, Har Sinai. Both times Moshe is shepherding his flock, first his sheep, and then eventually B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, us, our ancestors. And both experiences of revelation change him fundamentally. And yet Moshe responds dramatically differently to each divine encounter. And I could kind of understand that because so many experiences in life, each one changes us a little bit. And, and you know, and we may not even realize some of the changes that take place in us with different experiences, different encounters throughout our life, our lives. Whereas the re revelation at, at Sinai was foretold by God, the burning bush catches Moshe entirely unawares. An angel of God appears to him in the flames and Moshe finds himself unable to avert his glance. Quote, I must turn aside to look at this marvelous sight. Why doesn't the bush burn up? Shmot chapter 3 verse 3. God, struck that Moshe turns to look, calls out to him and, ident and identifies God's self as the God of 
his ancestors, which catches Moshe's attention in the unusualness of a bush that is not consumed. Remember that. The bush did not burn up. But what catches God's attention is that Moshe notices this. When the Lord saw that he had turned to look, God called to, called to him out of the bush. Chapter 3, verse 4. <clears throat> this is not the first time that God has chosen as his prophet the person who stops to notice. The Midrash and Breshit, or Genesis Rabbah 39.1, relates a parable to illustrate God's choice of Abraham. According to the Midrash, Abraham may be compared to a man who was traveling from place to place when he saw a residential building ablaze. He said, is it possible that this building lacks someone to take care of it? At that point, the owner of the building looked out and said, I am the owner of the building. Likewise, the Midrash continues. Abraham asked, is it possible that this universe lacks a person to look after it? And God responded, I am the master of the universe. Uh, so I am, well, please forgive my, um, my lack of organization. It is notable, noticeable, or notable, I think I would rather say, in this Midrash, God is the owner. It is Abraham whom God will appoint to care for the building. By teaching the world about monotheism, the belief in one God. According to the Midrash, Abraham was chosen by God because he was unable to keep walking along on his way when the world was on fire. In the face of so much injustice, he demanded to know who was in charge. So, I think we have to ask, who's in charge? I think God created us as God's partners. God is the builder. We are the caretakers. And I think we have to remember that. I think that if we remember that we are the caretakers and we do it in a way that is acceptable to God, who is the builder, if we live according to Torah, I think that are not, and not just Torah, okay, I'm going to include, I want to be including everybody, Bible, according to the Bible, okay, everybody's Bible, then I think we have a better chance on having a beautiful world. The world depends on three things. Torah, worship, avodah, and chesed, loving kindness. And I think if we, if we live according to those three things, our world will be a, even a more beautiful place than it already is. We have a lot of work to do. We always do. It's not, it's very, it's a lot of work to be caretakers, but we can do it. We definitely can do it. And let us say, Amen. Please turn to page 166 for Alenu and please rise. <clears throat> 
עלינו לשבח לדון הכל, לתת גדולה ליוצא הברשית, שלא עשני כגויי הרצות, ולא עשה בנו כמשפחות אדמה, שלא עשם חלקנו כהם, וגור עלינו ככל המונם. ואנחנו קוראים ומשכבים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא Excuse me. כקצו בתותך, אדוני ימלוך לעולה ועד, ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך הקורץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד, ושמו, ושמו Please turn to page 184, stay risen for Mourner's Kaddish. If you have a yard site or in the midst of the morning period, please recite Kaddish with me as well for those that um, unfortunately passed on this week due to COVID, and the young lady who passed away yesterday when the White House was terrorized. Yit gadal ve yit kadash shimeh rabba ve'amma di'evra chirutei ve'amlich machutei ve'chai echon u'v'yom echon of Chaye de Chol Beit Yisrael, Bagala Uvisman Kari Vimru Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mevarach Le Olam Olame Amaya. Yit Barach Vayish Tabach Vayit Paar Vayit Romam Vayit Nase. Vayit Zadzar Vayit Ale Vayit Halal. Shemeda Kurisha Brech Ho Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vechayim Aleinu Vyakho Yisrael Vimru Amen O Se Shalom Vimru Mal Hu Yase Shalom Aleinu Vyakho Yisrael Vimru Amen let us now turn. I think we are going to sing O Se Shalom. I think that would be a beautiful way to end today's service. Please join me. You can find this using the last two lines on page 184. <speaking in Hebrew> Ve'ako Yisrael, ve'imru, imru, amen, ose shalom b'imromav. Hu yase shalom aleinu, ve'ako Yisrael, ve'imru, Imru Amen. Yase Shalom. Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'ako Yisrael. Yase Shalom. Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu Ve'ako Yisrael. Ose Shalom. Bim Romav, who ya se shalom aleinu, vea ko Yisrael, vea imaru, 
Himaru Amen. Okay, please um, join me. I have something sweet today instead of challah. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Vahey minei mezonot Amen I want to wish everybody a Shabbat Shalom and a good week, a healthy week and I will see you next Friday. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Good night, everybody.